Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are heading into day 87 of the ongoing war between the Russian Federation and forces of Ukraine. And uh, today, we're going to start out uh, in the eastern uh, Donbass. Uh, I know this is going to be uh, absolutely difficult uh, for some Ukrainian uh, supporters uh, to, to hear, and I'll probably get some pushback on the comment section, but the, uh, the situation, especially uh, to uh, the north of Popajna near uh, Severodonetsk, uh, right now is uh, is very very dire uh, for Ukrainian forces. Uh, we we estimate at this point that uh, a lot of the the defensive forces that were operating uh, on the east side of the Seretsky Donetsk River uh, within the confines of Severodonetsk uh, have uh, have uh, withdrawn, and right now there is uh, probably uh, no more than uh, five to uh, to seven hundred. Uh, Ukrainian personnel uh, right now left inside of the uh, city of uh, Severodonetsk. Uh, the Ukrainians right now uh, are continuing to position uh, itself uh, on the western, south uh, western bank uh, within the area of Lizychansk uh, to oppose uh, the ongoing Russian uh, drive. Now, a lot of the forces of, of, of Russian forces uh, that we're seeing uh, operate uh, near Severodonetsk are in fact uh, forces of uh, the uh, Novo Russia uh, units, uh, not regular Russian army units. Uh, they continue to uh, operate and push into Severodonetsk. Uh, the main uh, areas of, of regular uh, Russian activity are both to the west and south of uh, Severodonetsk. So we know it, within the vicinity of uh, Papashnaya, uh, there is uh, roughly uh, two brigades of uh, Russian uh, naval infantry forces uh, that are uh, operating in this area. Uh, they appear to be the, the leading assault forces in this operation, and obviously uh, those forces as well are, are backed up uh, by uh, 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 Russian uh, uh, separatist forces as, as well, including uh, Russian uh, Spetsnaz forces and, uh, and regular motorized rifle forces as well. Uh, to the west of uh, Severodonetsk and west of Lizychansk, uh, in this area, we see more and more uh, regular Russian, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, motorized rifle brigades uh, currently being deployed uh, in this operation. Most of the success right now, as I, I talked about in the previous video, uh, is happening near uh, Popashina uh, with uh, this uh, continued uh, Russian advance that is both moving uh, in a west, uh, northwesterly, and kind of an easterly direction towards uh, Lissy Chance. And again, the whole goal is designed to eventually cut off uh, those Ukrainian forces. Uh, that continue to dig in to the just to the west now of uh, Lissy Chan. So it's going to be very, very important uh, for Ukrainian forces that are operating uh, near Lyman, Slovayansk, uh, Bakhmut, Kramatorsk uh, to not allow uh, Russian forces to completely cut off uh, those Ukrainian forces that are preparing and have prepared uh, those defensive lines near Lysychansk. Now, uh, there is a significant force construct of uh, Ukrainian forces now deployed uh, near Lysychansk. Uh, there are regular uh, Ukrainian motorized rifle brigades, including a, a tank brigade uh, operating just to the uh, south, uh, southeast of and within the confines. Of, uh, of Lissy Chance as well, including a, a number of uh, territorial units and uh, National Guard uh, rapid deployment forces uh, as well. And we estimate that uh, Ukrainian uh, force uh, composition uh, in Lissy Chansk uh, and uh, that, that could uh, eventually be uh, pocketed in this area and enveloped by Russian forces uh, could be anywhere from five uh, to 10,000 uh, Ukrainian forces that are at risk of, of, of being enveloped. Uh, the Ukrainians continue to fight now at the same time 
We are hearing reports uh, of uh, decreased morale in some frontline Ukrainian units. Uh, we have reports that uh, some uh, air mobile units, some of the more elite units within the Ukrainian military, uh, have surrendered uh, on the, uh, the, the eastern front within the vicinity of uh, the eastern uh, Donbass area of operations. And uh, it, it is a, it's a very, very rough time right now for Ukrainian forces, given the amounts and focus of, uh, of Russian artillery strikes, fixed aircraft strikes, uh, helicopter gunships, and, and, and now an increased uh, uh, maneuver capacity with Russian forces uh, in this area. So obviously the war has been going on for some time. A lot of these uh, Ukrainian units uh, have been degraded over the course of the conflict, uh, as have, has, uh, has Russian units uh, as well. But this is a brutal ongoing fight. Uh, but right now uh, we, we do uh, make the analysis that uh, right now uh, the Russians uh, do have the upper hand, especially uh, in the area near Papashnaya, uh, several Donetsk, and uh, and near uh, Lyman as as well. And we anticipate uh, that that operation will start to quicken, and eventually we could see, uh, as I talked about before, the complete encirclement of those uh, Ukrainian forces uh, that are holding that defensive line near uh, Lysychansk. But uh, we'll have to wait and, and see uh, what, uh, what happens uh, in the, the ongoing uh, conflict. There's also reports that uh, the uh, Russian forces could be preparing for another uh, river crossing uh, within the area in between uh, Izum and Lyman in this area here. Uh, we do know that the, the uh, or, or actually east of, uh, of, of Lyman, we do know the Russian forces uh, made the attempt uh, on that failed river crossing that did result in some fairly significant casualties uh, for Russian forces. Uh, but it looks like the Russians again are preparing uh, to uh, find uh, another way to uh, continue to, uh, to try and cross uh, some of these key terrain features uh, which uh, continue uh, to cause some problems for Russian forces. And we do know that uh, Ukrainian anti-tank weapons teams continue to operate in these forested areas. Uh, if you kind of zoom in here, uh, you can see just what I'm referring to. But you have very, very small units of uh, Ukrainian forces operating on all, with all-terrain vehicles, uh, many of them possessing uh, in-laws or javelins, uh, RPGs, Panzerfausts, and uh, continue to really take their toll on uh, some uh, individual Russian forces that, uh, that operate uh, in these areas and are continuing to try and push uh, the lines uh, forward for those uh, Russian forces. Uh, in other uh, 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 strategic and tactical analysis, uh, we believe quite possibly the next uh, offensive for Russian forces, uh, if Russian forces are able to uh, successfully uh, defeat Ukrainian forces, especially uh, near Lysychansk, and eventually uh, push towards uh, Slovyansk and Kramatorsk, uh, there may be a Russian uh, offensive operation along the east bank of the Dnieper River pushing up towards Zaporizhia. And uh, it would appear that uh, the, uh, the Russian strategy would be to move up the west side, I'm sorry, the east side of the Dnieper River, cutting off Ukrainian forces as they drive up the eastern bank of the, uh, of the Dnieper River, eventually seizing control of, uh, of major cities such as Zaporizhia, and then uh, 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 threatening uh, the Dnieper to further to the, the north. But kind of getting ahead of ourselves, uh, at this point, uh, there's still a significant challenge for Russian forces uh, in this area, Slovyansk, Kramatorsk, and several Donetsk, uh, before said operation could take place. Uh, but we do anticipate the Russians could be looking at some sort of major offensive push uh, in the area near uh, Zaporizhia in the uh, not-too-distant uh, future if, if things pan out for Russian forces uh, in the east. Now we do understand uh, there are additional uh, arms deliveries taking place 
uh, by Western forces, by uh, obviously the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany, and a host of other uh, NATO countries. Uh, the latest edition will be just under 100 uh, Leopard 1A5 main battle tanks. Uh, these are, are, are very good systems uh, and will probably uh, prove fairly uh, effective for uh, Ukrainian forces. Uh, obviously, they're not uh, Leopard 2s uh, or M1A2 uh, Abrams. Uh, but uh, the, the, the Leopard 1A5 has a, a thermal imaging site, uh, has a 105 millimeter main gun, main gun. Now, is it going to be able to, to trade uh, at, you know, at distance with a, a T72 B3? Difficult to say. I, I really wouldn't put the, the Leopard uh, 1A5 uh, as being too much uh, outclassed by the T72 uh, Bravo 3. Uh, or, or even uh, or earlier uh, editions of the uh, of the of the T90, uh, the uh, the ability of the the, the Leo 1A5 to uh, identify uh, T72s at distance is probably better uh, in terms of uh, uh, of uh, sensor packages, especially the, the thermal imaging optics uh, on the the Leo one is probably better than uh, what we see on the uh, T-72 uh, Bravo, Bravo 3. Uh, and, and we also know that uh, the Russians are having some difficulty in maintaining some of those, uh, some of those optics. I know when I was in the, uh, the, the military, uh, one of the, the issues that uh, even a Abrams uh, crew member ran into was uh, these thermal imaging sites uh, at times uh, going down. And, and, and then you uh, would need to uh, replace them. Or uh, they would simply uh, not uh, give you as good resolution. So uh, they, they all, based on my experience at times, some uh, thermal optics on one tank were better than the thermal optics on, on, on another tank. And we do know that because of the sanctions and some supply issues, obviously the the Russians are having some challenges in maintaining those uh, those thermal optics on those those Russian tanks. Now, at the same time, uh, we, we would anticipate that uh, given the the level of interest in supporting Ukraine, uh, especially uh, in the the amount of uh, of money that is being pumped into Ukraine now, this this latest forty billion dollar aid package. Uh, they're probably going to be able to upkeep a lot of those Leo 1 A5s in relatively good condition and maintain those, uh, those, those very important thermal imaging devices uh, on those systems. But uh, again, uh, I, you know, I, I, would, I wouldn't say that uh, the uh, Leo 1 A5 outclasses the B3, the T72 B3. Uh, both uh, really would be depending on who sees the other first. Can a can a 105 millimeter main gun with an armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabo round uh, defeat a uh, a T72 B3 uh, from the frontal aspects? Yeah, possibly. Ballistics are kind of funny, and you just never know. Especially uh, at some at depending on the engagement range, if it's you know within 500 yards, uh, yeah, very very probable they could they could penetrate the frontal aspect. Of a uh, of a T72, depending on where where it hits and just the kind of the ballistic conditions, but a a side aspect hit, absolutely, the the T72 is gonna gonna go up like a candle, as would a a a, a Leopard 1A5 uh, as well, a Leopard 1A5 as well, uh, if hit by the 125 millimeter main gun of a T72 B3 or, or really any. Uh, uh, T72 variant, T80 variant, T90 variant uh, main battle tank. Uh, they're also getting the uh, the Martyr uh, armored personnel carrier, uh, which uh, uh, will will help the Ukrainians in terms of uh, mobility. But uh, again, nothing you know really outside of the scope of of anything the Russians uh, wouldn't would not be able to uh, to destroy. And I think the the real uh, meat and potatoes of the uh, assets that are being delivered to the Ukrainians continue to be those anti-tank weapon systems, and then obviously the uh, the uh, howitzer systems, the 155 millimeter uh, howitzer systems with the Excalibur. Uh, those are those are very good systems that are being delivered to the Ukrainians, and and probably systems that are are more of a covert delivery that are taking place uh, to the Ukrainians as well to include uh, the Brimstone, the the ground launch uh, version of the uh, Brimstone long-range uh, gu uh, uh, guided missile system. 
But uh, that's where we are uh, for today. Uh, again, watching very, very closely what's happening uh, in this area near Lucy Chance, several Donetsk in, in areas uh, uh, both, I would say, 100 kilometers to the west and south of these locales. Uh, the Russians do appear to have uh, initiative right now, and uh, let's see if they can exploit uh, that ongoing uh, momentum and initiative and s see if the, the Ukrainians are able to uh, recover uh, in these uh, ongoing operations. Uh, that's it for today. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us.